Hello everyone, uh, my name is Tuba Kesar and I am a clinical psychologist and a cognitive behavioral therapist. I have worked as um, a research associate as well. I have worked uh, uh, as in clinical practices and I am teaching also psychology to A-levels. Um, my detailed background is in my profile, in my speaker profile. Uh, other than that, I am thankful that you could join my talk about how the importance of self-regulation in children and how can we teach them to self-regulate. Um, uh, and I'm grateful to be part of this uh, health summit and I'm quite sure uh, people will benefit so much out of it because there are so many speakers with all different kind of um, background which will definitely help you in many different aspects. So let me start my presentation. So uh, my topic is importance of self-regulation in children. Why is this important? What self-regulation is? We are going to cover all of that aspect. Uh, some kids need help learning to control their emotions and resist impulsive behavior. Now, if you are a parent, chances are that you have witnessed uh, a tantrum or two in a day. But we expect them to be in like two years old. But if your child reaches to school age and meltdowns and outbursts are still very frequent, it may be a sign that they have difficulty in emotional regulation and self-regulation. Simply put, self-regulation is the difference between of a, in a two-year-old and a five-year-old who is more able to control their emotions, helping kids who haven't developed self-regulation skills at a typical age is the main goal for the parents in training programs. Um, and many older children, if they if uh, they are beyond tantrums, continue to struggle with impulsive and inappropriate behaviors. So this is why understanding self-regulation, understanding the importance of self-regulation in children, and teaching them how to do that is very important for parents, especially before they reach a certain age where they are not able to uh, self-regulate anymore. Now, uh, one thing that I wanted to do this, that starting directly to what self-regulation is, I wanted to start it with a very basic concept. So I would, uh, before uh, talk, talking about self-regulation, if you think that you are working with a child or working with children, what is the most important thing when you are working with, uh, with a child as a parent, as a teacher, or as an uh, educationist? The most important part is forming or needing a proper framework. A proper framework is very important when you're dealing with children. Now, what are the essentials for making a framework? It should be flexible. It should be fundamental. It should be simple and easy to implement because if it will be complicated, child will not be able to understand it, then the implementation part will get difficult. It should make sense. It should make sense to the child also so that he or she can learn and incorporate it in daily life. Solid empirical foundation. Now, empirical evidence is very important. Uh, it can be done through observations, documentation of patterns of behaviors, through an experiment. So you need to do that also. Efficient so that you are achieving the maximum productivity with minimum effort. Because when you are working with children, you need to understand that their threshold to learn is not as an adult. So you need to keep that in mind. And it should be effective so that you are successful in producing the desired and uh, intended, uh, intended result and behavior in a short period of time. Now, uh, questions that lead to an exceptional framework. Number one, based on your experience, what is the golden thread that leads to an overall success? Can we identify one set of skills that predicts success across many domains? So if a child is able to uh, identify one set of skill, what is that skill in which he or she will be able to uh, show success in other domains as well? If you had to choose one set of skills for your own child, what would it be? 
and answer to all these three questions include self-regulation. So this is where I wanted you to understand why self-regulation is important, starting with the basic. Now, if we talk about self-regulation first, now self-regulation has a very, very broad interpretation to it, like uh, self-control. Self-control is the ability to, re uh, to regulate one's emotions, thought, and behavior in the face of temptations and impulses. Uh, as an executive function, self-control is a cognitive process uh, that is necessary for regulating one's behavior in order to achieve a specific goal. Self-efficacy. Now, self-efficacy refers to an individual's belief in his or her capacity uh, to exec execute behaviors necessary to produce a specific performance uh, attainment. Now, self-efficacy reflects confidence in the ability to exert control over my own behavior, my own motivation, and social environment. Responsibility and accountability, that the way I am behaving, this I should be responsible of it. I am behaving in a certain way because I am uh, feeling that emotion. So I am responsible of that. So taking accountability of their own emotions and behaviors. Homeostasis. Now homeostasis means balance. Balancing a steady internal and physical external uh, balance in the living systems is important to function. Appropriate responding. How are you responding to different situations? How are you reacting to different actions? Moderating behaviors. That are we, am I able to moderate my behaviors in different situations? Effortless control, being proactive versus reactive. Now, these are like different uh, interpretations to self-regulation, but like a working definition for, to self-regulation is the ability to manage your emotions and behavior in accordance to the demand of the situation. Now here where children need to learn and understand. They can't do it without our help. They can't do it without the guidance. Uh, now, what are the, those areas that includes being able to resist highly emotional reactions to upsetting stimuli? For instance, if the child is uh, arguing about to buy something and you are saying no, the reaction can be very, uh, high can be very impulsive how to control those emotions to calm yourself down when you get upset to adjust to the change in the expectations and to handle frustration without an outburst i think these are the main three categories in which children initially are struggling to self-regulate themselves now self-regulation is a set of skills that enables children as they mature to direct their own behaviors to a goal despite the unpredictability of the world and our own feelings. Now over here, the uh, that I mentioned in the previous slide of uh, being responsible of our own actions, of our own behaviors, uh, and maturely handling them in a different uh, situation with the dispute of your own expectations. Now, uh, self-regulation is directly related to success in many areas. Uh, learning, academic performances. And over here, please do understand that learning doesn't mean academic performances. Learning is your everyday life. What I'm learning from my daily life, what I'm learning through imitation, what I'm learning through observation. Academic performances, what you're studying at school, your subject, your study. Social interaction improves. Your uh, understanding of when you are able to understand your own emotion, you are able to understand emotions of others as well. So this will help you, and uh, this will help children to have a better social interaction, make better friends and relationships. Overall health, safety. When a child feels secure and safe within themselves, they are not all the time in that defensive and uh, danger alert mode that if they are if they don't feel secure inside they're all the time the nervous system is in the action mode is in the fight mode that i have this is dangerous this is dangerous i have to react to this i have to react to that and that needs to stop and that can only stop if the child is feeling safe within themselves developmental issues their milestones become easier so in short Regulation, self-regulation is equal to success. If a child is able to understand 
how to regulate their emotions, how to control, how to bring everything to baseline can lead to success. And again, when they keep doing it with the, in their early age, they, it, this will become a norm. And when they become an adult and become mature, it is easier for them to adjust to the external environments so on any kind of a different situations. Can be stressful, can be disappointing. They will be able to adjust to it. Now, there was a, a research done by Sligman and Duckworth that, and it clearly shows that the self-discipline outdoes the IQ in predicting the academic performances. This is how much self-regulation and self-discipline is important. Now, um, what does emotional dysregulation look like? Now, problems with self-regulation uh, manifest in different ways depending on the child. Some, kind, some ch kids are, children are very instantaneous. Like they have a huge, strong reaction, which there's no lead in or build up. They can inhibit, uh, they cannot inhibit uh, the immediate uh, behavior response. And for the other kids, distress seems to build up and they can only take for so long. Eventually it leads to some sort of a behavioral outburst and you can see them uh, going the wrong path, but you don't know how to deal with it. So the key for both kinds of kids in, uh, is to learn and handle those strong reactions and find ways to express their emotions that are most effective and less disruptive uh, than having a meltdown. So when a child is uh, feeling that they do not have uh, control over the situation, that is where the uncertainty hits them. Whenever we are in a situation where we feel like that this is getting out of our control, of course, that uncertainty builds up that anxiety, that builds up the frustration, and then the human behaves in a certain way. That is where we need to understand that self-regulation leads an individual, poor self-regulation, leads an individual to feel like they have no control. And when a child feels secure within themselves, they feel that they are able to control their emotions in different and difficult situations. Uh, now, why do some kids struggle with self-regulation? Now, professionals see uh, emotional control issues with a combination of temperament and learned behaviors. Now, a child's innate capacit uh, capacities of self-regulation are temperament and personality-based very subjective. Some babies have trouble self-soothing uh, and get very distressed when they're trying to bathe or put on clothes. Those kids may be more likely to experience trouble with emotional self-regulation when they're older. Now, uh, but the environment over here, I would say, play a very, very vital role, uh, important role. When parents give in to tantrums or work over time to soothe their children when they get upset uh, or act out, kids have a hard time developing self-discipline. In those situations, the child is basically looking, looking to the parents to be the external self-regulators. If that's a pattern that happens again and again, a child is able to outsource the self-regulation instead of learning and controlling their own emotions and self-regulating it. And then this becomes a habit. And when they are adult, they, instead of self-regulating it, they outsource for instance, if you are able to handle everything for your child, the child will never learn to regulate their own emotions and adjust to the environment. Over here, what parents make a make mistake is that they make the road for the child instead of making the child for the road, if you know what I mean. Now, children with ADHD and anxiety may find it particularly challenging to manage emotions, uh, their emotions, and need to help develop emotional regulation. So there are definitely patterns to it and we need to understand. I would, I strongly believe with my experience that environment, how the family is dealing with the child plays a very, very important role in that. Now, how do we teach self-regulation skills? Now, acting out is essentially an ineffective response to stimuli. The parent or teacher or any kind of a professional who is dealing with it needs to help the child slow down and more carefully choose an effective response to the impulsive uh, reaction or, instead of being impulsive. We should approach self-regulation skills in the same way as we 
approach any other skills, academic or social, isolate that skill and provide practice. When uh, you think it is a set of skill to be taught rather than just a bad behavior, it changes the tone and content of the feedback when you're giving it to your children or, or your students. Now, um, the key to learning self-regulation skills uh, is not to avoid situations that are difficult for kids to handle, but to coach the kids through those difficult times and provide them a supportive framework, the framework that I just mentioned. Clinicians, professionals call it, uh, I also use this word a lot, scaffolding. Now, scaffolding uh, is the behavior you want to encourage you, uh, until they can handle these challenges on their own. Now, imagine a situation that can produce uh, strong negative emotions like frustrating math homework. Uh, and if a parent hovers too much, and uh, what they're doing is that they are risk taking over the regulation role. Instead of the child recognizing that the work is frustrating and figuring out how to handle it, what they feel is that the parent is frustrating them and then they don't want to do it anymore, the work, the task. Now, scaffolding in this situation uh, might help the child with one problem and then expecting them to try the rest. If they feel frustrated, they might get up and get a drink, get a small break. They might use a timer to give themselves periodic breaks and the parent would keep a check on that, on the intervals you are giving them, the breaks you are giving them and offer praise and acknowledgement to their efforts. I will talk about it later in my presentation. If a child is prone to melting down when they are asked to play a video game, a scaffolding might be practicing transitioning away from the game. If you would want to practice a game in which they are not overly invested, you don't want to begin with high stakes, right? Have them practice playing for two or three minutes and then handling you the game. They get points or rewards, something that they want every time if they do something or they achieve something. So what they do is that then they learn how to emotionally regulate themselves to get those, that reward. And then this becomes a norm. They are able to generalize it in different situations as well. Now, uh, before I talk about the main how to teach, we need to understand what the goal is. Again, goal is to increase self-regulation with age and decrease external regulation with age. As I just mentioned that children then learn to outsource their self-regulation. They don't take responsibility of their emotions anymore. They blame it to someone else. They outsource it, that someone will handle my emotions. Someone will make me calm down. Someone will help me to reduce the frustration. Then what they do is when they, re with the age, the outsourcing increases. It becomes part of the habit. Again, as I mentioned, it becomes the norm. But the goal is to help them understanding their emotions, self-regulating it and feeling safer within. Right? And when they, you, they practice it again and again and then are able to generalize it, then the self-regulation will increase it. Now, uh, keeping the cognitive behavioral psychology point of view, there's uh, evidence-based uh, strategies, self-regulation strategies, which is divided into three main skill domains, physical, emotional, and cognitive. And I'm going to break that down into different categories, which then is easier for you to understand. Now, before I jump to uh, the three main uh, essence for self-regulation skill training, I wanted to share some, some assumptions of self-regulation framework. Children will do well if they can. So we need to understand their capabilities as well. One must be physically calm to effectively engage in problem solving and learning techniques. Human beings have little control over the environment, but a great deal of control over their response to their environment. This is where the self-regulation will help them to adjust the uncertainty in the, given by the external environment, the disappointment given by the uh, external environment. The relationship is likely the most important variable when trying to fit someone change. Uh, cognitive behavioral psychology works 
that is why I have uh, covered mostly with the cognitive behavioral background. Effective self-regulation is critical for success and happiness. In order to be effective, we need to meet children where they currently are functioning. So uh, understanding their potential is very important. Understanding their potential means that you are understanding their strengths and their weaknesses. You are encouraging their strengths and their flaws both. If you are accepting them as a whole, then they will feel more secure within themselves. Do not assume that children have learned anything about how to regulate their own behaviors in a healthy way. They will keep making mistakes, they will keep learning, and it's a learning phase. How they, they will take time to generalize in different situations, but as a parent, as a teacher, we are the main facilitators, and we need to teach them. Now, three functional categories, as I just mentioned, is physical, emotional, and cognitive. Starting with the physical regulation, the fight and the flight response, the adrenaline rush. If you are in a situation where you feel threatened, you are in that fight and flight mode. Or either you freeze, you run, or you fight, or you react. When a child is in this situation, their lower brain is in uh, command, the higher thinking is not engaged. They won't know the complications they might have after reaction, the particular re uh, after the particular reaction. The body is ready for the action, but they don't know how to deal with it. Performance requiring thought is compromised. They know what to do, but what will happen after they do it, they can't comprehend that. Learning is decreased. Problem solving is decreased because they're not reacting to the situation. They're not analyzing the situation and reacting in a normal way. Then what the child does, usually yell, scream, pushing, throwing, biting, shutting off. Sometimes children just shut off and isolate themselves as well. That is also part of their fight and flight response. And then in the end, either they or people can get hurt. Now, um, the goals of physical uh, regulation skill training are that to moderate the autonomic system, flight or flight, that they are able to moderate it instead of reacting it, either running away or reacting to it. If bringing their body to baseline again, that adrenaline rush, they should be able to bring it to the baseline again, which is calm, which is thinkable, which is doable, that you will be able to think in that position. Promote a feeling of safety and security. Again, I think I cannot emphasize enough that feeling of safety and security for children in self-regulation is the essential key. Now, um, strategies, repetitive movements. Now, the repetitive movements with objects, repeti uh, repeated body movements such as rocking, hand flipping, uh, ritualistic behavior, sensory uh, actions like uh, clapping, tapping, uh, and circumscribed interest. This is what repetitive movements are. This will help them to calm them down, uh, calm themselves down. Stretching, stretching your body, uh, stretching your muscles to regulate that oxygen rush in your body. Change your physical position. If you were standing, sit. If you're sitting, standing, thing like that. Breathing, relaxation exercises, meditation. If you do it with your children often, they will learn to take deep breaths when they are anxious, take deep breaths when they are about to have an outburst. Distraction, distracting them from that particular stimuli which is triggering the impulsion in them. Uh, then imagination and visualization. This is a very uh, successful technique in cognitive behavioral psychology. Then according to the research, uh, visualization works because neurons in our brains, uh, electrically excitable cells that transmit information, interpret imagery, image, uh, the imagination that we are asking them to do as equivalent to a real life situation. So when we ask them to visualize an act that they are in a situation, they need to close their eyes and think how they are, uh, how will they deal with it, the brain takes it as a real life situation and then the child is able to handle it in a safe environment these are some activities i found online uh, which i think is very effective with working with children by warning signs 
Now, one of the first steps in diffusing emotional upset is successful recognition of the physical changes. So the child should be able to understand that when they are getting emotional, when they are getting excited, hyper, angry, what are the different physical changes that happen in their body? So in this worksheet, they are given some of the warning signs and then they can add if they have any and they need to draw themselves here when they are feeling that particular feeling. And then how to calm themselves down to change, uh, to bring the changes that just happened. This helps them understand their emotions, understand the changes within themselves. So when they are feeling the changes, they would recognize that, okay, I'm about to get angry, I'm about to get anxious. And they will be able to, again, distract themselves, start deep breathing and different techniques so that they feel calmer and bring their, bringing their body to the baseline. Uh, melting freeze. Melting freeze is a, another activity when children who do not regulate uh, well difficulty having calm uh, difficulty in calming down themselves physically when they are upset. So this worksheet helps them to understand. To just imagine that this ice, that melting ice, and uh, is like your body, your muscles. Now we are going to change the form of our muscles to frozen like ice, and then melt it like water. So they are able to understand the physical changes in their body while they are about to calm themselves down. Again, this will help them to understand their physiological changes. Cooling the flame, another very interesting activity worksheet. In this strategy, we teach children how are, who are angry and how to take control of their anger by utilizing visualization and deep breathing. So for instance, if I give this worksheet to a child who is feeling anxious, angry, they are going to uh, show the anger in that circle through color, maybe through different uh, designs. And when with the breathing, they are feel cooled down, they will keep the, and they will decrease the intensity with the circles with the new. And by the last circle, they are more calm and the body is back to baseline. So they tend to shift to the lightest and the very cool colors. Again, indicating them that when they started this activity, how were they feeling? And with their own techniques, by breathing, by visualizations, by understanding their emotions, they were able to calm themselves down. And then awarding them that you were able to calm yourself down on your own. So in this way, the child won't outsource their regulation. They will understand how to regulate their emotions on their own. Coming to emotional regulation, the second part. The goals are accurately identifying emotions, our own and then ours of others. Own and accept responsibility of our feelings. Express feelings in a healthy way and appropriate way. Now strategies to do that is identification and labeling, expression training and responsibility for feelings. Now again, I found a worksheet for that. For instance, you cannot make me laugh. This is a very interesting activity to do with children, especially those who are struggling with self-regulation and do, do and they feel like they do not have the power to um, regulate their own emotions. So in this activity, uh, it is it's like a pair work, and one child has to make the other child laugh. In this way, and those who will laugh will lose. So in this way, they will be able to un uh, control their laughter, control their emotions, and it's a fun activity as well. Three emotional expressions. Children, again, who struggle with self-regulation often have difficulty expressing the feelings they have. Because they're not able to understand their own emotions, they're not able to understand others. They're not able to identify, and then they're not able to label it. Cognitive behavioral psychology believes that when you are reacting, before that, cognitively, you label your emotions. When you label your emotions, then you react in a certain way. And then again, if we keep labeling the wrong emotion in the wrong way, that becomes the norm. So in this worksheet, what are the things that you are interested in the child listed down? And then if you're angry, number one, that is already in the file or in the worksheet that talk with someone about it. Because this is what we need to make them realize that if they talk about it, they will be more aware and then they will be more accepting towards it. And then what can they do to express their anger, sadness, worry, happiness? Cognitive regulation. Cognitive regulation, the goals are that they should learn problem solving skills. They should incorporate 
psychological needs and motives. Children should understand that what are their needs and what are their uh, wants because they need to understand that what they want is not important, what they need is important and psychologically again more important. Planning and organizing their skills, insight and understanding, this is relating uh, in relation to identification and labeling. Forming healthy beliefs about ourselves and the world around us. Strategies, specific training to problem areas, insight oriented teaching to promote understanding, for which you need to talk to the children in a healthy way, let them express how they need to express and accepting them. Learning about their own patterns of behaviors. Here's another worksheet for which uh, is called Defiant Strap. The child is struggling with self-regulation, often have difficulty complying with rules and limits. They don't know what their limits are. They don't know reacting to how to react to a no. This activity helped them that how they are trapped in a situation and what can help them to reach to a certain target and to a goal without breaking any rules. Staying in the limits, how can they fulfill their needs, how they should limit and create that fine line between the needs and the wants, where they start throwing tantrums and impulsions. This will help them to understand and learn their uh, privileges and their wants. The domino effect. This is this one I really, really like because children with, again, struggling with self-regulation often have difficulty understanding the fact that they cannot control their emotional and behavioral outcomes, right? In this worksheet, what, they, what we do is that we ask them to write an activating event, an event that maybe uh, triggers anger in them, and then they have to draw the end result. And decision points of the intervention. What do you think that can change the end result? And in the end, what can be the positive ending? So with this worksheet, they are going to create their own interventions and then they can realize, okay, with these interventions and techniques, decisions, I could change my bad negative ending with a positive and a happy ending. With the same activating event, we are not changing the trigger. We are changing the end result by changing their interventions and seeing it in a different perspective and making the right decision. Now, uh, some other ways uh, to teach self-regulation. Now, practice runs. Now, uh, over here, I would like to say that often parents get discouraged when things don't go well at the first time, uh, if they are trying skill building. But consistency and starting at a level that is appropriate for your child is the actual key. Rather than just giving up, okay, my child is not able to understand, my child is not able to uh, comprehend my instructions, Try pairing down the activities so it is more doable. As I said in the framework, that it should be more effective and efficient. And slowly give your child more and more independence to handle it. For instance, if brushing their teeth is a problem for your child, you might start by focusing just to put toothpaste on the brush, right? And respond and respond it with a positive feedback. Give them reward if you can. Once they have practiced that few times, add the next step in the chain. Similarly, if getting out the door in the morning is causing tantrums, like dropping them to school, target one step at a time. First, say getting dressed by, say, 7.15 should be the first target. When they have mastered it, then set another target that breakfast should be done by this time. When they have mastered it, breaking the chain into small... Now, what we need to understand is that breaking the chain into small steps allows them to self-regulate skills in a manageable increments. It doesn't, it doesn't feel, uh, they don't feel overwhelmed. They actually feel happy that one by one they're able to do it. And then again, when with the age, they're able to generalize it in different situations. For instance, this slide, if you have trouble with a child reacting impulsively or having tantrum in a store, make a short visit with them over there. Make them practice walk with you, keeping their hands to themselves. They get points after every successful uh, uh, try with this practice runs, either going to a market, going to a shop, going to a toy store, maybe. Uh, helping kids become self-reflective. As I mentioned earlier, that labeling, identifying emotions is very important when you are able to self-reflect. 
able to understand what the mistake was and accepting the mistake and not able to do it again. That's self-reflection. Now, when kids are part of an environment that's reflective and analytic as opposed to emotional and fast-paced, they can learn to make better choices. Over here, I would like to mention, if you haven't heard about Lorianne. Lorianne is, um, uh, she works in Thailand and uh, she uh, 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 trains t uh, people and coach people for TRE, tension releasing exercises. And I had a meet up with her and she explained so well that when you are dealing with children who are hyper impulsive, you need to keep yourself calm, right? It should be, nat it, it should be part of the nature of the environment they are in. They should learn by more seeing you, by seeing you having self-reflection exercises, seeing you by staying calm when there was a tense situation, right? So we need to slow down and model self-reflection and self-awareness uh, and self-regulation for our kids, but it's also helpful and good for us as well. So uh, mindfulness and meditation are good, effective for everyone, even for children but especially for children, because this will help them in self-regulation. Many parent training programs available to help them become better coaches for their kids. For older kids, DBT, uh, dialectic behavioral therapy is also a very effective uh, option because it is focusing on distress tolerance and emotional regulation. Because at the end of the day, uh, though nothing can replace the work done by parents, it seems to me that family environment is the most important piece because if we make them learn and we are incorporating self-reflection and calmness and groundedness in our routine, our children will pick it up. Our children will learn from us. Very important part is that it is relationship of mutual respect. You need to understand that you are not imposing and projecting authoritative ways on your child. You need to respect them and you need to have that relationship with them to increase self-regulation. Power versus overpower. Modeling. What would I do what I do? Coaching, offering advanced guidance. I will talk about it in detail and acknowledging, believing in their potential. When they know that even the slightest change I've made and it and my parents have noticed it, my teacher have noticed it and they're praising me about it, they feel happy. They feel that they are in control of the situation. Now, uh, power. Power is a very important aspect. We need to teach them how to take power and ownership of their emotions and behavior instead of imposing them on us. Don't impose that you need to behave in this way because I like it. You need to behave in this way because this is more effective. This is more uh normal for you this is more uh easy for you in with the age they will be able to then generalize instead of just projecting your power on them you need to give them the power of having the control over their own emotions modeling more is caught than taught i completely believe in that morals respect kindness cannot be uh like like given a formula for that. You need to show it in your routine. You need to make them learn through how you do it. Like children learn what they know in their environment. So you need to demonstrate these activities, demonstrate self-regulation, demonstrate respect, demonstrate balance. Parents who take care of their own mental health, children, researches have shown that children will adopt it. Parents who have a healthy lifestyle for physically, mentally, children will adopt it. So you need to demonstrate it for your children so it is easier for them. The, your modeling will become a norm for them. Self-directed. We need to understand that all the behaviors are in an attempt to meet a need, right? All people need to be nurtured, to, feed, uh, to meet their physical needs, to grow, to express themselves, to realize their potential, to engage it in meaningful relationships. So please do understand that when your child is reacting in a certain way, please do understand that they are trying to meet a need. 
you need to understand the need also to help them self regulate in the future now uh, what is choice what this choice lead you closer to where you want to go further way help children to meet their needs in more productive way we don't do that we don't practice that in this way children learn in their own negatively that whenever i cried i got it whenever i showed anger i was uh, given this so try to give them the freedom of expression in the positive way now uh, offering an acknowledgement as i mentioned earlier that acknowledge that you have seen what they tried like i observed your patience while you waited for your turn thank you for your peacefulness when you used your words instead of your body i appreciate your helpness a helpfulness in picking up your toys as soon as i asked so even they are showing you that they want to change and they are trying to change with the slightest smallest thing and actions you need to acknowledge that you need to show them and tell them that this is visible and we are proud of you so that the child is able to do it confidently next time i believe that when you reinforce a positive behavior and negative behaviors automatically goes down offering guidance what do you wish someone to do please be uh, respectful by not interrupting me when i'm making a phone call what should help you to find your patience while you're waiting i need you call upon your friendliness by saying hello to our guests so things like that you need to tell them and guide them don't expect they already know everything you need to guide them because if you are not telling them and then you are getting disappointed this creates this question mark in the child's head that what what have i done why my parents are mad at me i didn't i, I didn't do anything wrong if the child didn't say hello to guest because they were never guided for about it how is that a mistake so they offer and offer them the guidance tell them what you wish that they would do in these situations so they are able to you uh, do it every single time instead of staying in this dilemma that what have i done which i don't even know my mistake about right offering corrections very important assisting others in getting back on track debrief them what happened don't just stay angry tell them why were you angry or disappointed you need to debrief them exactly what happened in in their mental capacity what quality was missing in their behavior were they not self disciplined disciplined were they not kind enough were they not patient uh next time when you see someone struggling how could you use your compassion discuss it with them that in this situation you were not able to show much kindness but next time when you are in this situation you can show your kindness by doing this by doing that you can show your self discipline by doing this what is courteous way to disagree with what you have heard so teach them this they are not born with it you need to tell them you need to offer them corrections you need to use your self discipline to get your work in on time next time what you could do differently you can teach them and then make amendments make changes for the next time and if they are able to do it with the slightest different you need to acknowledge that and give them positive reinforcements supporting the growth of self regulation offering guidance in anticipation of a challenging situation you need to tell them and support them so their self regulation grows with the age teach coping strategies as i just mentioned breathing visualization breaks time out self coaching that when you are in a difficult situation and no one is there you know what to do you need to pause a little bit bring your emotions to baseline breathe a little bit make them the, in in their normal daily life ask them to do it again and again in front of you so when you are not there they are able to do it on their own teach them how to avoid distract uh, distracting and disturbing situations you can teach them by visualization by being in different techniques creating some in situations in which you are able to help them and guide them how to avoid so they are able to do it uh, in the future teach them how to notice and adjust uh, and adjust to their self cues like the worksheets that i mentioned it will help them to understand and notice the triggers the changes uh, in their body physiologically when they are about to have a certain emotion so when they notice they will adjust to their 
self views okay i'm about to get angry my father told me my mother told me my teacher told me that just pause a little bit and uh, take deep breaths pause a little bit and do something that i like things like that distracting my own mind so that i am able to calm myself down teach children helpful perspectives right we need to uh, understand that from their perspective as well and then teach them your perspective again i would say that the mistake that parents do is that we believe that they already know certain things and that is very common sense but that isn't they need to understand and they need to be taught on their level by accepting them by accepting their potentials and accepting their limitations these are some suggested reading i find i have read them and they are excellent reads if you get time please do uh, read them it will really help you in understanding self regulation and importance in children uh, in the end uh, thank you so much i hope this talk would have helped you in uh, understanding the importance of self regulation and how you can apply you uh, in my profile there there is this link in which to which you can connect to me so please do if you have any query i'll get back to you and hope you will have a uh, a clear understanding by now that why self regulation is something that needs to be taught to our children and why they need to be taught because this is where they will start understanding that controlling their own emotions being responsible of their own emotions is what maturity is and they will gain it with the age so i hope uh, this would have been helpful have a good day uh take care